Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So, I was really excited. I was on a kick and I thought what we were gonna do is we were gonna dig in and start to look at Chop Executes next and it occurred to me that we are missing one uh, kind of primary ingredient before we can really start to dig into what those are and that is the mysterious function. Right, we kind of need to understand what functions are here in Python before we can really start to dig in uh, to how executes work. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to look at a couple really simple examples of functions. Hopefully those will start to make a little bit of sense. And that's going to set us up to really be on the fast track to a good time. Okay, so let's get started by dropping down a good old-fashioned text stat. Now, you may well be saying, Matt, what on earth is a function? Right now, a function, uh, according to point or tutorials point online, check out the blog for a linky link, um, is a block of organized reusable code that is used to perform a single related to action. Functions provide better modularity for your application and a high degree of code reusing. Okay, well, blah, 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 blah. what does that even mean? Um, we, on an everyday basis, you right operate a number of different kinds of um, functions in your life, right? We don't think of them as functions. We kind of think of them as things that we do as human beings. Um, but we do these things, these t tasks, uh, on a regular basis. And that's essentially what we're going to do here. So we're going to kind of write out in very simple instructions what a particular task is. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, that's okay. Don't worry. We are going to look right at that. Okay, so let's start by writing a really simple function. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Um, so we start that uh, here in Python with def, D-E-F, right? This is our kind of shorthand for saying that we're going to define a function. Then we specify a name, right? In this case, first function. Then these parentheses are where I would put any arguments or parameters that I want to pass in to my function. And the signal that we are about to start the function is this colon, right? And then the next thing I do is I'm actually indented one line, or excuse me, one tab, and this is where I start to actually write what it is that my function is going to do. Now, we're going to go ahead and use print because that's awfully familiar, right? So we print hello world, and we can end this function with a return statement. Now, we could use a continue statement here as well. Um, but return is actually, it's going to be great for us. Um, we don't have to return anything. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means here in a second. All right, so here we've got our first function, hello world. We're going to print that out, and we're going to return. We're going to save that, and let's run it, right? Let's just, ah, uh, nothing happened. <sighs> okay, so... I told you that we were going to write a function, and then it seems like we didn't write one. Well, we did, in fact, write a function, but what we neglected to do is we neglected to call this thing, right? We have kind of uh, written it all down, but we never summoned it into action. We never spoke its name and called out to it and ordered it to be summoned forth. So we need to do that. That's our final step. So we're going to say first function... And now, right, so we've defined this thing kind of abstractly up here. Then we've summoned it into being here on line 7. And now when we run this, aha, we've printed out hello world. So that's pretty swanky, right? That's kind of our, our first kind of look at what it means to write a function, right? Not bad. That's pretty simple so far. So let's look at another kind of like particular piece of all this, right? So the next particular piece I want us to look at is what's this return business all about? What does it mean, return, right? Like that's, that's a silly thing to have in there. Well, in fact, return is when we want to get something out of our function, right? So we've got this thing, and it, you know, does its little magic, and we want it to give us something back. And so that's what we ask to be returned to us. So we're going to change our function here a little bit. We're going to have this thing called text, and in text, that's where we're going to put hello world this time. And this time around, we're going to return text, right? 
So we've got this thing in here called text. We return that at the end of the function. So now when we run this, we should see uh, nothing happened. So, okay, so the first time around we did something and nothing happened, and now we did another thing and nothing happened, so what gives, Matt? It seems like I'm just giving you a bad day. Well, we returned that, but you might remember that we didn't actually do anything but summon that function into being, right? So if we were to print out what we're getting out of that function, right, we kind of know how to do that in lots of ways, right? So we're going to print out this thing, and now what we should see when we run this, aha, is now we see hello world returned to us. So there are lots of reasons we might have situations where we don't want those things together, right? We might want a value returned that isn't necessarily printed out. In this case, we're kind of printing as a way of debugging what's going on in here. This is our way of kind of like peering into the little minutia of what's happening inside of our function. Because with Python, unlike touch, we can actually see all the operations that happen. We need to actually explicitly ask that they be given back to us. So in this case, uh, by putting in our print statement here, this allows us to print out the thing that we get back rather than embedding the print inside of the function. It feels like a small distinction, I know, but it's in fact a very important one. Okay. Let's write another function, because we are on a roll here, kids. We are just going to town. Okay, this time around, we're going to imagine that we want to do something really simple, right? So if we can get something out of a function, certainly we can put something into a function, right? That seems like that would be a thing that we'd want. So the thing we're going to aim for right now is turning a number, like, say, an integer, into a decimal point. And we might think of doing that like with a percentage, right? So I want to convert something like 50 into its percentage equivalent or into its decimal equivalent is how I might think about that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to define this thing called percent and we're going to pass it a value, right? So I've gone ahead and given this a name here. Right, and I use my magic colon to indicate that I'm going to begin what's going on here inside my function. So I'm going to make this thing called calculation, calculation, and calculation is going to be equal to val1, right? This thing that I pass in, right, val1 is going to get used down here, and we're going to multiply val1 by not point, not one. Excellent. And that's what calculation's going to be. Now, I could do this silly thing, right? Print, whoa, not square brackets. Print, calculation. But then it would be stuck in here inside of my function. And every time I called my function, then I would print this thing out. So let, you know what? Let's not do that. Instead, let's just return. Return our calculation. Okay. Now, our last step here is now we need to summon this into being, right? We need to call it forth. We need to speak the magic words. We need to call out with the dark arts and say, percent. And inside of percent, we need to feed it a number. We need to give it a value that it's going to then convert into this float format. So let's say 40. Now, we'll notice that we're still missing a print, right? We haven't actually printed anything out. So let's go ahead and print out this thing that we're calling a percent. And now let's see what happens when we run this. <gasps> Lo and behold, we get a float out of this thing, right? That is pretty darn swanky. That's great, in fact. That's wonderful. That is, in fact, one of the most important things for us to see, that we can not only put things into our function and change them when they're inside, but then we can extract them. We can get things that come out of this. Now, let's go ahead and look at one other example, right? Let's take a look at this. And let's do something in here uh, like, let's say, and we'll edit this in a proper text editor. Edit, edit, edit. So let's imagine that we're not even going to use val1, right? So val1 is available to us, but here inside of this calculation, instead what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do something like uh, print monkey. I don't know why we'd print monkey, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to print monkey. 
And you know what? We're going to go ahead and get rid of this thing because we don't need that. So now here we're calling our function percent. Oh my goodness, percent. I can't believe I spelled that wrong. Excuse me, everybody. Uh, so we're calling percent. We're giving it a value because it needs a value. But we're not actually using it, right? We're going to get something called calculation back, ooh, which actually we should define in here. Otherwise, we'll have a problem. Uh, let's say calculation is due, right? So, you know, there's all the stuffs in here. We're going to give it a number, but all we should really see happen is we should see it print out monkey. Okay, let's see what happens. It printed out monkey. Okay. So that might tell us that here inside of our function, we might have this variable, right? We are, excuse me, we might have this argument available to us, but we don't necessarily have to use it. And, you know, I don't want to belabor that too much, but that's going to become really important to us in the not too distant future. The fact that this thing might be here, but we don't need to use it. It's kind of hanging out there, and we can use it if we want, but we don't have to if we don't want to. So here we've practiced a little bit. But now that we've actually done a little bit of practicing, let's go ahead and let's write another function. Because you know what? That's all what we're all about here. We're all about uh, writing things and practicing. That's what we do all the time, right? So let's imagine that we want to do something where we maybe pass in two arguments instead of just one. So a good example of this might be uh, a tip calculator. So let's define our tip calculator. Calculator, good, great. And in order to actually calculate that, right, we need a total. And then we need a tip percentage. Percentage. So we've got to give it those two things, right? We need to give it a total, and we need to tell it how much our percentage is going to be. So now we're going to go ahead and figure out what our tip is. So our tip is going to be our total, right, times our tip percent divided by 100, or we could also multiply by 0 0.1, right? Our total bill is going to be our total plus our tip, oops, just tip, not tip percentage, excellent. And then last but not least, we want to return our tip and comma, our total bill. All right, there we have it. Now, we're still missing one ingredient, right? We need to print out what we're going to summon forth. So we're going to call our tip percentage into being. We're going to summon it forth from the bowels of the Python depths. We're going to give it some values. So 50 is our total. And our tip percentage is 15%. All right. And now let's run that and see what we get. <gasps> oh, good. Ah, tip percentage is not defined. Oh, dear. Wow, we misspelled something. Oh, I love it. Okay, great. Tip percentage. Oh, right, of course, because it's our tip calculator. Calculator, excuse me, silly me. There we go. All right, so tip calculator, that's the name of our function. 50 is our total. 15 is our percentage. All right, let's see what happens when we run it. Aha! Lovely. All right, so we've gotten back our tip, which is 7.5, and our total, which is 50 point, or excuse me, 57.5. Okay. Not bad, right? That's pretty good. We're doing pretty well there so far. Let's look at one final example, right? Let's look at one last thing that we might do to understand uh, that we can actually just push this a little bit further, right? We can go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole and find what's on the other side. So this time, let's go ahead and reuse this thing that we've already written. Now, let's imagine that I don't actually want to print out in this silly way. I, because I'm feeling very swanky, want to define a new function, and my new function's job is going to be to print out, in some very pretty way, what's happening here inside of my tip calculator, right? This is separating my function, so I've got a way to actually do all the calculation, and then I've got a way to print it out, like, all pretty nice, because, you know, sometimes you want to print something pretty nice. Okay, let's take a look. So we've got our tip calculator, 
And now we're going to write another function. This time around, we're going to do a display total. And for our display total, we're only going to give it one thing, right? Uh, and the reason we're going to do that is, let's look back over here, right? So when we ran this, we saw that we got this tuple, right? We got these two values that came out, kind of spit out together, bleh, uh, right next to each other. So we're really only getting this kind of one thing back. It's two things, but they're separated in a way that if we really wanted to kind of dig them out, we'd have to do a little bit of like finagling, right? So we'd have to do something like um, zero, right? This would give us, oops, cancel. This would give us just the first part of this. Okay, so that gives us just our tip. And if we do the second one, then we get our total, blah, blah. okay. But if we do this whole thing together, then we get both of these. Okay, we're gonna take advantage of that. Now this maybe isn't the right way to do this actually, but you know, for today, we're not gonna be able to get ourselves into too much trouble because we're kind of thinking of this in a relatively simple way. So we're gonna roll with it. Okay, so we're gonna pass in this thing, tip and total, okay. That seems, well, total bill. Let's be really explicit, right? We're gonna get one thing that comes in here. So now we need a couple ingredients. I want a dotted line, cause I like me some dotted lines. A dotted lines, in this case, I'm gonna have this thing, and I want that to happen 10 times, cause I'm needy. And then I've got some tip text that I'm gonna make. And in this case, I want this to be your total tip is, and we're gonna use our fancy new format way of doing this, right? So curly bracket, curly bracket. Then I've got a total bill text, and that's going to be your total bill is curly bracket, curly bracket. Excellent. So now I've got kind of my main ingredients here, and now I'm gonna figure out how I want that formatted. So first I'm gonna print out a dotted line. Next I'm gonna go ahead and print out my, ooh, right. Well, in here I wanna do tip text, uh -huh, here we go. And then we're gonna format, right? We learned this last time. So we're gonna format and then we need to put inside of this format thing, right? Look at that, look at that, it's got brackets. Mm, that would probably tell us that this is a kind of function, uh -huh, right? We're learning kind of what these things mean. So we're gonna give it the text that we want formatted, right? So we only get one thing, which means we're gonna go ahead and use tip and total bill, and add a tip and total bill, brackety brackety, right? We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we get the first thing, right? Because we happen to know the first thing that we get back is the tip, okay? We're gonna go ahead and reuse this same shenanigan. And this time around, we're gonna do our, whoa, total bill text. Let's make this a little bit larger, there we go. So our total bill text, then we're gonna format that and we want the one thing, right? Of course we do. And then finally, we're gonna print out another dotted line, cause dotted lines are pretty friggin' swanky. And then we're going to return this whole kit and caboodle. Okay, woo. Now we're getting pretty close, but we still need to do a few more things. In this case, I want a total. And our total bill is gonna be $100, you know, or 100, I don't know, uh, I don't know, pick a currency, I don't care. Um, and then we're gonna do a tip percentage, right? And we're gonna say our tip percentage might be uh, 20. We're feeling generous this time around. All right, so next thing, next, we're going to start with our last function. So display total. We're going to summon that thing into being. And we know that we just need to give it one thing. Right, we just need to give it one tuple and that one tuple happens to come out of this thing, right? So now we're gonna actually go ahead and put our whole tip calculator function in here and we're gonna put our total and our tip percentage right in here. Okay, and with anything like luck, we're gonna run this and voila.
a little bit of magic has happened, right? So let's look at that just a little bit more closely so we can really understand what happened. So we started with this display total, right? And this thing happens to take this one little piece of information, which is actually two things that come out here kind of buddied together. And that actually does all the pretty displaying, right? That prints it out in a nice pretty way. But our tip calculator is actually the thing that does all the calculations. So we said, hey, you know what? I want to display my total, and I'm going to give you the thing, right? I'm going to actually call the function inside of the function that's actually going to do the thing that I want. Okay. So, you know, we do that. Um, even though this might not be the prettiest way or the best way to actually do this particular kind of operation, but we do that to see that we can actually use the multiple definitions, right? And we can combine them in really interesting and useful ways. And we're going to actually see a bunch of that as we start to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into what it is that we're actually doing with our chop executes. And the real reason that we do all of this, right, is that all of our executes, and I'm going to pick on chop executes because they're real easy to look at, right? So here in my chop execute, we'll see that sure enough, I've got this thing definition off to on, right? And available to me in that particular function is this thing called channel, sample index, value, and previous. So I've got right here a whole bunch of functions. And over here in my parameters are a set of flags that correspond to which ones of these functions are active, right? Which one of these things are actually cooking right along? Which, thing, which one of these functions are actually being processed? So for us to really take advantage of really understand what's happening here inside of these executes, we really needed to understand the fundamental of what an actual function is, right? Because this lays the groundwork for us to really understand how we take advantage of our executes in a really powerful and interesting way. So this one's a little bit shorter here today. Hopefully it's a little more concise and a little more fun. Well, I mean, come on, they're all fun. Uh, or at least that's the story I'm going to tell myself. Um, so that's a little bit about what functions are that helps us see them a little bit more concisely, understand what they are in the context here in Touch Designer, especially because we are going to use them a whole big fat ton when we start to think about executes and all of the magic that happens inside of these functions. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I'll see you on the flip side. Happy programming.